Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Welcome all of my friends to Couch Pilots, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, but you can call me Baby New Black, and across from me is the stork I rode in on. It's Captain Philip Restisher. Good evening. Good evening, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> all be for the grand old flag. <laughs> Ah, oh, boy. Uh, brand new year. A brand new failed television pilot from the past we to are, speak about. We are ready to kick 2018 in its earth. Yep. Bend over 18. You're going to get one. You're going to get a big fat one. And if you, we, we, That's why we didn't say bend over 17, because we could get in trouble. <laughs> Legally. Yeah, that's not the, the song isn't 17 to life, you know? 17 and life to go. Our crime is time, mm, 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 and it's mm, mm, 17, 17 and life, life to go. To go. Keep your eye on the grand old flag. <laughs> um, we party hard last night. You know what? This is. Um, I feel really weird because it, it's kind of like we're back in school. You know, like we just partied so hard last night, and we got a big test coming up. You know we, what I mean? We do have a very big test coming up, and we we teased about it, and we've kind of been putting it off. We've been procrastinating because our test, our our test test. Is next week. The, yeah, the smart money is, hey, we know what's coming up. You take a couple of pre-tests, and then you take it early. And if you fail, you still have time. Right. But we're kind of coming down to it. We've been procrastinating. And last night, even dumber, party pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, we we drank quite a bit last night. What was your favorite part of the party? Um, It was when we were counting down. where Everybody's got their arm around each other. We, and we, start, we started at 108 for some reason. Well, I just thought it was a good number, and everybody could get, get in sync. To you started the, at 108. It was you who decided to do that. Yeah, I, I was like, well, what's the best way to get everybody in sync by the time? Because a lot of times, like, if you start at 10, you're like 10, and then somebody says 10, and then it's nine, nine, eight, 10, not seven, nine, yeah. eight, s- five, seven, s- four. What do you want? Three. Oh Three. shit! It's the new year. Ah. Yeah. So instead, instead, yeah, instead of doing that. I was like, let's start at 108 and see how it goes. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I guess in retrospect, it was a good choice, uh, but it's it's hard to count backwards <laughs> when you're so wasted, like I was, right? <laughs> I mean, there was booze in the pilot's lounge. There was women. Some of them I didn't know. There was people that we didn't even know in there. But DSJ, this is oh, uh, my, we he... talked about 45 minutes a year. He can come in. He has time to decorate. But this is the other time of year we let him in. Is that the great uh, pilot's New Year's Eve bash? And he was walking around almost all night with a lampshade on his head. Yeah. (laughs) Like, he came, I think, with it. Because we don't have any lampshades. No, I all them. It's all LED lighting. Yeah, we we made the uh, environment conscious choice to do LED lighting. So we got rid of all the lampshades. Right. I don't know where he got that. He must have got it from his office. So this is not a a BYO lampshade right. real party. Uh, well, I know that we've been teasing this for a long time, and Kebmo, mm. it was it was looking forward to us taking this test. Uh, this is the FAA private pilot test. And, th- and thank you, Kebmo, for DJing the party. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, he did a great job. Didn't I didn't he? realize he uh, owns so many laser lights. I, <laughs> it, it's like. And I was smoking cigarettes because I wasn't supposed to. Right. And like you would blow it, and like it would show, tra- it would show like the laser trail. It was, it was like Pink Floyd's uh, <clears throat> "The Wall" or "Dark Side of the Mood" all over again. Right. Um, so what we're going to focus on is federal aviation Ugh. regulations. All right. How, how many flights have we taken? Like over a hundred for this yeah, show. Yeah, right? quite a bit. Has there ever been any kind of like? I mean, obviously, we do a turbulence section, but that's more of like a tongue-in-cheek as into the you know the problems of the pilot we watch. I don't feel like we have any issues that taking it up. And bringing it back down. And now the stuff in the middle. We have, uh, we have none see? of See? Yeah. That's why I need to take Maybe the test. Maybe we do need to take the test. So let's do that. Uh, the categories we're going to be uh, working here is the flight operation, American flight instruction, literature. communications and radar service, weather, 
aircraft performance and fe- federal aviation regulations. We're going to do uh, 10 questions. Do we have to answer in the form of a question, like on Jeopardy? No, it's actually multiple choice, so it's super easy. So, um, oh, there is a time limit on this. <laughs> okay. Uh, between 1,000 Z and 12,000 Z, the visibility at KMEM is forecasted to be what? A, half status, half status mile, B, three status miles, or C, six status miles? Um, C, a 25 minute question. C, right. six status mile. All I mean, right. I think that's pretty, that's pretty, I mean, that's that's an easy one. They, sure. they softballed me here. Right. I'll take the next one. What is the anti dot? When a pilot has a hazardous altitude, mm-hmm. such as restriction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is A, what is the use? B, someone else's responsibility. Right. C, I am not I am not helpless. I'm going to put B, someone else's responsibility. You know what? When all this fails, they say answer B. But when you couple that with someone else's responsibility, I feel like that's a slam dunk of an answer. Okay, here, this one's for you. Which statement best describes hypoxia? Okay, I know what that is for sure. A, a state of oxygen uh, differences. Defici- Just go ahead and read it as it's written. Okay, a, a state of oxygen deficiency in the body. Uh, B, an abnormal increase in the volume of air bre- breathed. Mm-hmm. And C, a condition of gas bubble f- um, formation around the joints and muscle. It's B. If, uh, yeah. Abnormal increase in the volume of air breathed. I was just going to say that, but yes. Yeah. All right. I'll take the next one. Sure. Uh, on what frequency can a pilot receive hazardous in flight weather advisory service in the vicinity of Area vicinity, 1? Probably. Vicinity. Yeah, vicinity of Area 1. Uh, 117 megahertz, 118 megahertz, or 122 megahertz. Obviously, it's 17, 117. I feel like we're doing pretty good on this. I so think far. so, too. We're going to try to bang through all 10 of these and then see what our score is. Like, no joke. Where I'm I'm hungover. Oh, I, 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 dude, I feel like death. Dude, and I'm, like, I, I'm right now a little hair from the dog that bit me. There you go. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I hear that, brother. Now, that's the only way I feel like I'm going to get back to normal here. So, um, I don't know. This next question is 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 something you should know. Sure, I, I know all of these. Uh, when departing a non-towered airport traffic pattern because you're getting it up correct you should straighten out or a make a 45 turn to the left b make a 45 turn to the right or c make 118 turn to the left 45 degree everything you own to the left to the left to the left Mm -hmm. all right we're halfway through i'm I'm, I'm feeling good fun I thought I was kind of like like oh man this is gonna be crappy I'm not gonna, but I, I am actually having a great time. Sure, doing some this. some of these have um, like you're supposed to look at a, a picture and then answer the question. I'm not even gonna look at it. That's that's a thousand word <clears throat> uh, cheat that I don't need. Right. According to the airport diagram, which statement is true? A. Runway 30 is equipped at position E with emergency arresting gear to provide a means of stopping military aircraft. B. Takeoffs may be started at a position A on runway 12, and the landing portion of this runway begins on at position B. Yeah. Or C, the takeoff and landing portions of runway 12 begin at position B. I think it's pretty obvious what the answer is. Yeah, C. Yeah. It's the takeoff. Because all those other ones, there's so many words that it can't be right. I always say the fewer words, the better. <clears throat> Number seven. Uh if more than one cruising altitude is intended, which should be entered in block seven of the flight plan? Right. The initial cruising altitude, the highest cruising altitude, or the lowest cruising altitude? What was the first one again? Uh, initial cruising altitude. That one, of course. I think that's... I always right. I, when, you know, something we don't say see on the show is like set it to initial cruising altitude. Sure, we, yeah, we don't say that because it's kind of just obvious. Like, who cares? It's not, not only is it obvious, but it's boring. People don't want to hear that. What exception, if any, permits a private pilot to act as pilot in common uh, of an aircraft carrying passengers who pay for the flight? Right. A, if the passengers pay all the operation expenses. 
B, if a donation is made to charitable organizations for the flight, such as Patreon. Mm -hmm. Or C, there is no exception. Obviously, there is no exception. No. We, we're not bending the rules for someone because they got a mm -hmm. C note in their pocket. That's it's malarkey. Like, it's like, hell, never went to C notes. You never go platinum. Yeah. Two more questions. Area C on the airport depicted in class is classified as A, stabilized area, mm -hmm. B, multiple hel heliport, or C, closed runway. Stabilized, of course. It's an A. All right. I'll this is, I mean... Is this like is this a test for children? I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry to ask that. Hey, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm not it's patronizing you. The FAA, it's what the FAA wants us to really? do. Really? Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, to properly purge water from the fuel system, I'll take care of this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, of an aircraft equipped with fuel tank subs and a fuel strainer quick drain. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. It is necessary to drain fuel from the A fuel strainer drain. Mm -hmm. Lowest point in the fuel system or fuel strainer drain and the fuel tanks. This is, I'm subs. not going to answer this, but I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to put my hands behind my back and you can answer it. Really See, good. it's the fuel strainer of course, of course it drain is. and the fuel tank. All right, submit tests. So, uh, I mean, honestly, I'm looking for like a 90 to 100 percent, you know, passing grade. I'm sure it's a what I would call a cakewalk, something very simple to do. So, I'm sure the, the, the calculations are in. What do we got? Uh, we, we, 10 questions. Right. All right. And we got a 40%. Now, hold on a second. 40%? Right. But what I would like you to do, oh, well, let's, let's do this. And Wait a second. We're not going to go through. I, let, let's, let's, let's find out where the problem is first. Then we'll discuss the problem. Okay. Okay. So you, you took the first question and yeah. we just, we did every other one. Okay. Right. All right. So Jason and Blake. Jason, first question you got wrong. No, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. Second question I got wrong. Third question you got wrong. Fourth question I got right. The fifth question you got right. Yeah, yeah. So we each got one so far. I feel like I, you maybe have read, read them wrong to me. No, I didn't read them wrong at all. Um, then I got one wrong. Then you got one right. Um, then I got one wrong. You got one wrong, and then I got the last one right. So we each got two questions correct out of ten. So okay, so you're saying like a forty percent, right? Right, so but that's only ten questions. I mean, if you think about it, if we do, it's, it's, I think it's a hundred questions. The the main test. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get a forty plus forty plus. Four, we're gonna get a hundred twenty percent. Well, let's break it down like this. We got ten questions. We got four rights. So that's forty percent. Okay. Well, let's let's just take the questions that we had. Okay. So I got a two out of five. Right. Yeah. So that means it's. You got oh, that's 50%. Still, that's still 40%, I guess, isn't it? Two out of five. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no matter no matter how you slice it, we really uh, pulled a boner. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, are you, we have to take this test this week, the FAA test this week. Do you still have your... Um, My your, notes your, from your, school? Your flashcards from when we used to go to... Oh, school. remember we used to do the flashcards? That's how we learned everything really quick. Do you still have your flashcards? Oh, yeah. I got them... In my briefcase. Did so you I, laminate them? Uh, yeah. I, I got them in the middle of a folder, and I got them filed. You're going to want to pull those because we need to... we got to uh, pull an all-nighter tonight. <laughs> you know what helps me get through an all-nighter? It's some booze. <laughs> got plenty of booze and beer. Do we have plenty of fan feedback? Uh, we got some fan feedback. Hell yeah. That'll cheer us up a little bit. Boy, I'm really kind of uh, down in the dumps Ouch. after... Uh, after learning of our poor score and ultimately the test that we may fail. Because if we do that, we're going to have to be doing this show out of a goddamn boat again like we did during the Great Flood oh, of Oh, the uh, Great Flood 17. of 2017. Hope we don't have that next year. Holy mercy. Uh, let's see. Let's start with... Uh, let's see. I got a new phone. So oh, to, okay. Let's start with, with the me. new phone. <laughs> the iPhone X. All right. Um, we posted uh, your favorite picture of our we we got some we got some photos taken professional photos taken. Yes, we did. We cashed in frequent flyer points of our own. Thanks to DJ Kebmo. Yeah, appreciate that. We're looking uh, f flying or f flying and profiling. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. flying and profiling. Uh, Dee Dee uh, put on a YouTube clip and she said, "That's my boys." And the YouTube clip was an old guy uh, going ha cha 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 cha. The guy with the big nose. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's how that went. And then Lori Garcia said, love this photo. So thank you very much, gals. It, it made us feel better. Uh, Didi then put, no wonder he's drinking. 
The black wombat was just has just realized that he's heard all of Captain Restashire's 100 different love conquest stories, and now he started the tales of the threesomes. <laughs> Lori Garcia, Dee Dee, I'm honestly surprised that Blake has not has not only had one but has had two threesomes. How much money did he have to bribe them? Oh, well, that is a good question. Is there an answer to that? It's zero dollars. Then Dee Dee said, Lori. And they were both with completely set, complete different sets of girls. And and Lori said, "I know, right?" And then a bunch of faces with uh, tears com- coming out. And I said, "Hey, I used to be a good-looking guy." <laughs> like I think if you went outside and were trying to get a threesome with different partners every day, like every day for for the year for the rest of your life, I bet you could do it. I like I said, I, like I tell these girls, I used to be a good-looking fella. What happened, do you think? Was it the Oreos? It's the two ex-wives. Ex-wives? Ex-wives. Uh, here is uh, Dee Dee. Uh, this is off from Baby on Board. Great show. Dee Dee put, Laura Garcia, do you mean this is why myself and half of the other females in Australia are starting to look like this? Jinxies. Oh, yeah. Uh, that You know what? Velma, underappreciated okay. as far as the Scooby-Doo gang goes. Okay. And then Laura Garcia says, Oh my God! Yes, I love Johnny Bravo crossover episode with Scooby Doo. We need more impressions on the show. That's hilarious. Oh yeah, the Scooby Doo impressions we did. Yeah, that was a big hit with with one person. <laughs> two people. With two peoples. Two peoples. Uh, we got a voicemail ready. Uh, thank you, Dee Dee. Thank you, Lori Garcia. Yeah, folks. Uh, anytime you send us fan feedback, you get frequent flyer points. Uh, you can use that toward our array of surprise prizes and such. So uh, definitely, we like to communicate with our listeners. And if you look on our Facebook, it says we're very responsive. Yeah, yeah, I would say so, too. There we go. Hey, guys, it's Tyler. It's been a while. I've just been kind of busy here lately. But I wanted to call and say that the episode with Jason's daughter was awesome. All the episodes make me laugh, but that one right there, it had me smiling the whole day at work. To the point where everybody was kind of looking at me. <laughs> Guess they done thought I'd finally lost it. <laughs> but anyways, I was having a good time with it. And something I wanted to bring up since y'all was talking about uh, X-Men and all that. And how much... Jason's daughter loves the franchise. In the first X-Men movie, I think it starts off with Rogue. I I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched it. But it's where she's with her boyfriend and almost kills him. Well, the subtext at the bottom says Meridian, Mississippi. And that's actually my hometown. Oh, wow. Small world. I live in Collinsville, Mississippi, and it's uh, about 30 minutes outside of Meridian. Meridian's the big city here. The Prince and Meridian. if you put it up against any other city, it's not real fucking big, but it's the one you want to go to if you want to go to Walmart or something. Collinsville, <laughs> we just got a firehouse, Chevron gas station, a tire place, and a post office. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Anyways, I just thought that was kind of cool. Uh, here for long, I'm going to call in and tell you about my experience as a couch con. It, it, it was kind of odd, and the only thing I've got to say about that is hashtag me too. <laughs> and also, I met uh, Adam from Love Blow Podcast, and he just kept talking about Jason and how funny he was. Anyways, I'll get that on the next voicemail. Uh, You guys keep on keeping on, and that's about it. Talk to you later. Great, great uh, contributor to the show. Uh, Thank you so much, Tyler, not only for the voicemail, but for uh, for making uh, making comments about how you enjoyed the episode with my daughter. She had a great time doing it, and we had an awesome time having her here, so that was a lot of fun. Um, And to give us a little backstory about where he's from, you know, how it ties... Oops. Uh-oh. Oh. Good lord. <laughs> so, whew. 
<laughs> you okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but like how it ties into the X-Men and where he's from and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. That was really cool. Um, we have another voice film all from... God damn it. Another what what voice. is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? I'm, I'm upset about that test. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> It's Tyler once again, and I apologize for the second voicemail on the road, but I left off some stuff when talking about the uh, Generation X episode. One other thing I wanted to mention, uh, Meridian, Mississippi, is also the home of TV. Uh, TV is the amplifiers, guitar amps, and now they make guitars. PV. I don't PV. know all what else, but okay. I, I just kind of wanted to plug that because that's a big thing down here. You know, that's that's our pride and joy. Even though Hartley PV, the owner and creator of all the PV Enterprises, He's kind of a dick if you ever meet him around here. But, you know, I guess he's got money and lives in a town like Meridian. Anyway, PV amplifiers are some hellacious amplifiers, especially if you get a good tube amp. Anyway, that's about it. I don't know why I wanted to mention. <laughs> I guess just kind of representing from my hometown. And that that's about it. That don't even know why I recalled for that. But. <laughs> oh, one other thing I want to mention: anybody else on listen to Couch Pilots seriously needs to check out uh, Broken Funny Bone because it's fucking awesome. Free plug. And yeah. pretty much any show on the FCF network. And I'm going to go now because I'm about half drunk as into, into some Dale's Pow-Ow. Pow-Ow. <laughs> and I won't fuck with y'all no more. Last voice. Love Be that guy. Ooh. Love that guy. Tyler is a badass yeah, dude. Tyler. <laughs> we got you, Tyler. No, I love it when we hear from Tyler. It's been a while since we have listened to him. Uh, me. Sometimes I worry about him, you know, when I hear from him. But we understand that people have lives. But he's always insightful, always has something to say. And um, Just because my life revolves around couch pies doesn't mean everyone's life does, you know? I, I would hope that it does. I want everybody's life to revolve around it, but that doesn't happen, and that's fine if that doesn't happen. I'm I'm so glad that he plugged the new show here, yeah. uh, a Broken Funny Bone. That's a lot of fun to do. We, you and I get some guests, and we do some different things, uh, unrelated to failed television pilots. Um, variety of, of activities and fun and games. So sure. that, that's a great show. So so glad that he's already checking that out. Um, you know, he says sorry to keep bothering. It doesn't bother us at all. No. We, we love to hear from him. So yeah. that's fantastic. We don't care if you're sober or drunk. You get a hold of us, buddy. We're drunk half the time doing the show. So <laughs> thank God, right? It's the only way I can do it. Maybe we should we should come out with our own kind of pale ale, so so people can drink it and get through the show with us. Oh boy, the couch pale ale. Yeah, couch pale ale. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Woo! Coming in hot. <sighs> 2017 in the rearview mirror. I'm looking forward. I'm looking ahead. Oh, we have to look ahead. We yeah. can't look behind. No. Well, how are we going to run into a fucking mountain? Right. Hey, on a mountain top. Even though I'm looking forward, I do. I, I keep in mind all those television pilots in the past, the ones that had only one episode, and the ones that we will talk about and and let our frequent flyers know about. You know. Yep. That's what we do. That's our passion. That's, that's what we love to that's do. That's who we are. Yeah. That's part of us. That's part, that makes up my DNA, my RNA, you know? Rest and relaxation? That's right. That's exactly right. Do you, do you think this is relaxing and restful, doing this podcast no, with me? it's very tense. I never know when you're going to freak out or your wife's going to come down here and scream at you for smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen next. I am, I am, my, I'm Folks, please, clenched. Folks, please call in and tell my wife that I'm going to die eventually anyway. Please let me enjoy cigarettes and booze. <laughs> it's his last love. You know um, what? To be honest with you, I'm doing you, the listener, a favor by trying to die sooner by smoking cigarettes. Yeah. So you should be thanking him, listeners. 
And I, I do want to actually thank you, listeners, uh, for helping us sell out uh, the first round of tickets for CouchCon 2018. They were going so fast. Um, we we had to order a special server to do this because we had commerce online. We we linked up uh, both pachinko machines to handle the load, but it was honestly it was just too much for even both pachinko machines. So we had me, mm-hmm. you, um, DSJ, and Molly were all taking phone calls, right? And 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 writing manually writing people's credit card numbers down, mm-hmm. and and then we were logging them in later on. It was amazing. I, I the first I, round I, sold out, man. The first round is sold out. We got VIP packages left now. We got a bunch of great announcements coming up down the line. But this October, get ready because round yeah. two, second and, annual CouchCon. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's ten months away." <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you if you heard oh. anything about the first couch con, you got to get in that bag right off the bat. You're if not you going to want to miss this. There was people when we were having couch con that was like, "Hey, where's it at? How do I get tickets?" And we're like, "We." <laughs> I would look, look. I would cut off my arm and give it to you if I could, but sure. I can't. I cut my penis off. We and are give at it to maximum you. capacity. We work sure. so closely with the local fire sheriff there about hey. And Folsom. Yeah, we said, hey, how many more people can we get in here? And he said, you are at maximum capacity. You right. can't fit one more soul in here. Right. So this year, uh, the uh, venue that we've selected, which is top secret as of right now, we're going to announce it on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, <clears throat> we've doubled the size. And we still, with ticket sales, I, I, we're, we're with the VIP packages yep. coming up, it's going to be cl- – so don't wait any longer – uh, you've already you can't get general admission tickets now. There, it's it's over and done with. Those are all sold out. Yeah, you can only get VIP tickets, and so we're going to give you information about that in the upcoming episodes. But it'll be worth it. Let me. I but, promise you but that. Do not think that you can just wait till the last minute. It does not work that way. Unless you're a paraplegic or something, everyone has laurels. I beg of you, do not rest <clears throat> on them when it comes. Laurels to- and Hardies. Yeah, everyone's got laurels, and I I love a good Hardee's burger. Do not rest. I like, I like a Hardee's sausage biscuit, but it's like three, almost three bucks, and like I can get a shittier one at McDonald's for a dollar. I I just take the shitty one because it's cheaper. But I love a Hardee's sausage biscuit. It's good to know where your mind is. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Today we discussed the pilot episode of Knee High Pi from the year of our Lord two thousand plus three. Great year. Two thousand and three. Ooh, gosh, we were so close. So close to what? Oh, the My 2005 story. sexual no, story? No, not 2005. It was 2000, 2001. Okay. Or in that area. Oh, were you having sex at midnight so it like leaks over to both years? <laughs> no, but it was in that time frame. I, it, it, it spilled over into two different ones. Well, do you have any great stories from 2003 you can mention? <laughs> not really. I had met my second wife, and so mm, no. I legally I can't tell you any of those stories. There are a couple that are good, but you can't, I can't tell stories from that marriage. You're you're, you're bound by law not to. Mm-hmm. Cease and assist. Wow, I had no back idea. in IBWIP days. How and that lasts forever? Uh, that's what my lawyer says. It doesn't oh, matter what sucks. podcast you're doing if you talk about. It. Then there's a problem. We should have those documents exhumed so we can go <clears throat> over them with a fine tooth comb. Well, yeah, I think it kind of like those all the Kennedy files that just came out recently. You know, they yeah. were in quarantine for 25 years. Yep. I think that's what I'm going to have to talk to my lawyer about unquarantining these. Yeah, get these dequarified because I want to. I want to know some of these stories. Yeah. I'm chomping at the bit here. They're not. They're not pretty. Okay. They're not pretty. All right. Well, it's, I, I I like to think back in rose-colored glasses, making everything I see from the past pretty. And by doing so, we go back to the year 2003 so we can properly digest knee-high PI, but we can't do it physically, so we do it in, in our, our minds. minds. Yes, exactly right, because physically it's impossible to go back, but it's not fair to this pilot to to judge it as today's standard. So I say, here's some things that happened at that time. And it'll help us put us in that mind frame. Sure. That's where you have to be to do it. you mm-hmm. got to be in that pocket. You and I, we've learned so much doing this show over the years that we said, what is the, 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 the most fine-tuned, perfect way to attack this pilot? There's only one way to do it. And we're doing it that exact way. And that's in our minds. January 7th, In the Club single is released by 50 Cent. Bouncing in the club, so come give me I'm in love. I'm in the having sex, I ain't into making love. I've got a pocket full of drugs, hey. right? Hey. Bump, bump. Hey. Hey. Bump, bump. Hey. Bump, bump. Hey. Bump, bump. Uh, 50 Cent, supposedly, didn't he get shot like a bunch of times in the chest? I think it's a bunch Curtis of Curtis Jackson. And then he, he like wore a 
bulletproof vest. Well, you know what I heard? Uh, he did. He did wear a bu- bu- bulletproof vest for a while, almost as a fashion statement, I think. Too. Yeah, that, but, definitely. Um, but you know those stickers you can get for your cars to where it makes it look like it has gu- like bullet holes in sure. it. Sure. I heard he did that like to his body. He had, oh. he, had, he put those stickers on his body so people would think that he got shot. He didn't really get shot. There we go. Go, 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 go. Go, shorty, it's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. Call it like it's your birthday. You know, no, we don't give a fuck, it's not your birthday. God, he got a lot of pussy, I bet. A, a MTV Video Music Award Best Rap Video and Best New Artist 2003 Billboard Song of the Year. You're welcome, 50 Cent says. M&M. I wonder if it's like from the beginning of January of that year until the end of 2003. Like th- that's the time frame in which they judge the best song. In which case, if this was released on January 7th and that stood the test of time to where at the end of 2003, they say, it's time to name a song of the year. They remember a song from the beginning of January. That's, that that's shows insane in the, the membrane. Insane in the brain. Podcaster like me is going insane. Uh... I, I like that song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, it gets you in the groove. To, you, you walk into the cl- you walk into a party and they're playing that. If Kevin Mo Slice is playing that, you you grab a drink and you just fucking go right on the dance floor. You're like bitches. So what you got, you're gonna look around and there's gonna be empty chairs everywhere. Every, yep. Asses will be on the floor dancing. All right. And if they aren't, smack that ass. Put it on the floor. Smack that. <laughs> I don't know the song. <laughs> Give me some. Mo. Is that Akon? Smack that. Yeah. Uh, oh, I liked Akon. I thought Akon was good. It all sounds the same. Like, image to me is bullshit. So, like, I, I don't buy these guys as hardcore. Oh, no, not at all. Or anything, but I do like some of the music. All right? Sure. Uh, January 26th, 91st Women's Australian High DD Open. Serena Williams beats Venus Williams. Beats her sister. Can you imagine? And this happened quite a few times in, in major uh, tournaments. That's they, incredible, they faced though, right? each other. Like, for, yeah, to, for two people to spawn two children that were at the epicenter of tennis. Yeah. I, I can imagine... Their father, and I might be way off base here, by being, a, and a, a pun intended, a slave driver, and that uh, Michael Jackson's dad, you know, like Michael Jackson was a perfectionist because mm-hmm. his dad beat the hell from right, him to right. get him to be that way. I was, is that what you think would happen with these Venus girls? No, I think they were just that talent. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he was he, he was very structured and rigged with it. Rig- Rigorous? <sighs> that was close. Yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> you got to be real careful, buddy. Wow. I think he... he when they were young, but then I think they just they found the success and they ate up and they said, for me to continue to be at this level, I've got to practice and, and sacrifice and and kick ass and take I names later. I think you're right. Thank let, you. Let, let me ask you this: uh, Serena and Venus Williams, are they sexy? <laughs> are they sexy girls? I would say no. I don't think they are sexy. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna look into your. Mind. mind and i'm gonna say that you think they are sexy i do think they are sexy um they have these like there's a difference between like a, a some broad having a big fat leg and, and then having like this big beautiful toned like crack your head like a fucking walnut leg <laughs> right that's what they got going on there's that's uh, serena's serena's that's that's, <laughs> that's their celebrity couple name uh serena's <laughs> is good looking i think okay i think one of them's married to a white fella too and i, I hey you know what I could be that white fella. You could have. Could have been me. <laughs> but, it could have uh, been me. But they are, uh, I think they're beautiful women, talented. It is crazy that these two women end up being at the top of the, the female tennis game. But couldn't you, wouldn't you get bored of every weekend going all over the world and listening to them go, uh, uh. Well, when I be, like if I was the husband having to do it? Yeah, you'd have to go. I think at the end of to, the day, if I got, you have to, you have to keep those girls in check because you know that they'd be getting a bunch of guys and stuff wanting to get up all in their racket. Well, if at the end of the day I got to be inside them and then enjoy the money that they made, I think I would be okay with traveling the world to do that. Okay, that's just, that's just me. Uh, 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 uh. Sounds like me having a couple of threesomes. <laughs> Just whipping my dick from one side to the other and hitting him in the face. Oh, jeez. Is that how you have a threesome? <laughs> Boy, no wonder I've never had one. Uh, January 30th, Belgium legally recognizes same-sex marriage. Good job. I think, I mean, if I see two guys kissing and they have wedding rings on, I think I would recognize that as them being married, don't Oh, you? yeah. 
I don't I, think it's hard to recognize marriage. No. And, and I don't think it's that is as big a deal as everybody made it out to be. Like, people that fought it and stuff. I'm like, hey, we're human beings. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's in your pants. No. If you love another person, you know, if it's if you're like wanting to marry an animal, it's a different story. But if you're wanting why? to why another, is it Why is it a different story? Eh. That's weird. How does an animal give consent? Exactly. So, um, in, my, in my opinion, if two human beings... That are of legal age, love each other enough to put themselves through a marriage for Christ's sake. Right. More fucking power to them. I don't give a damn. They. Oh well, you know they shouldn't have health care. Yeah, they should. I don't give a damn. You know if. What's the case for two uh, gay people not having health care? What's the case for that? Well, that was something that was a big deal. I know, but what, oh. if someone, if for the person who's against it. Why would they be against it? I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Either. I don't care. I don't. You guys, if you want to get married, which is the dumbest thing in the world to do, it doesn't matter if you're if two. If you want to be a dumb If you're gay two guy. guys in one cup, if you're two girls in one cup, if you're a guy and a girl in one cup. Why is a cup involved? <laughs> there's always a cup involved. Really? Again? Yes. That's God. why I was not successful in my first two marriages. There was no cup involved. See, I don't know. I don't know the first thing about marriage, it turns out. Yeah. Hmm. But... I don't. It, I'm just saying it right now. I don't care it, it, if two human beings, right, of legal age, consent and they love each other enough to want to get married. Go for it. Rock on. Rock out with your cock out or your vagina in or whatever. <laughs> rock in. Rock out with your vagina in. No, rock out with your cock out okay. or your vagina in. Oh, it's all one thing. Yeah, uh, I guess way to go, Belgium. Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Sweet. Just get married. If, if you want to ruin your life, <laughs> gay or not, go ahead and get married. Be it's my guest. It's my life. It's now or never. never. I ain't going to live forever. The back of his songs. And your songs too lately. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking some backup singers. Hey, um, I was 22 in that year. How about you? I was 28. Great. Were you married at 28? Oh, yeah. I was married at 28. So this is the second marriage. This one I can't talk about. It. The, it's two marriages. Was one better than the other? Yeah. Which one was better? The uh, first one or the second one? Are we only talking about the two? We're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. two past ones. The, the second one was better. The ending for the second one sucked ass because she had an affair. But oh, I thought she held you up at gunpoint. No, no. It 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 lasted longer. It, okay. So, but uh, no, there was there was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Did you nail it this time? Is this is this it? Oh, my third marriage? Yeah. I hope so. I really do hope so. so say this doesn't work out. You get married again? No. Why did you get married this time? Um, Love? So you don't think you'll have love again? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. I, what? No, I'll love. I, but I can love someone without... Putting a ring on it, as Beyonce would say. Whatever. Why did we choose to watch this fucking shit? Three simple criteria. A, it was a pilot that never went to series. It either aired or not aired. It's irrelevant, but it did not go to series. Number two, we had to find it on the interwebs, even in Belgium. Number three, it had to be free. Ain't gonna nobody go. We can't expect our listeners to watch these and pay for them. You want me to the, pay the, for what? The fucking podcast is free. Why would we watch pilots that we had to pay for? We're telling you. Thank you. Straight up, that this pilot was a failure. Why would you pay for a failure? Straight up now, Tim. Do you really want to love me forever? Ow, ow, ow. Are you just having fun? Uh, 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 uh. Where can you find knee high pi? Because someone, someone's gonna say, you know what? I like what you had to say so far. I like everything oh, you're saying. But yeah. you know what? I'm not gonna go a step further until I watch this thing for myself. How do I do it? How do I safely do it? You can find the entire episode of Knee High P.I. by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or go to YouTube. And, and you, you know, know what, what to, to do, do Tube. <laughs> uh, flight attendants, Surround sound. Uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Wave to DSJ. I can't believe he came into work. He's like, I think he's sleeping standing up. Honestly. I wonder who watched the bit. I wonder who watched... The- DSJJR last night. Oh my god, no kidding. Baby mama? You think she had plans on New Year's Eve? She may had she may had baby drama. Ooh, baby mama drama? Summary of the pilot. Hank Dingo is the world's smallest private detective with the world's biggest ego. A rough, tough gumshoe full of attitude. He doesn't crack cases. He smashes them. 
Hank throws himself into the case of the missing lawn jockeys, beating the hell out of suspects left and right, and, but he'll have to survive a widow's scorn and an oil sheik's fury, not to mention a room full of ravenous, sex-starved concubines to solve this mystery. Pilot Long. Summary. Summary Long. Summary Long. Pilot Long. Could have could have knocked it down a little bit, maybe three or more four sentences. The, g- give me give me a, a short, liberty, or, or won't you give me death? Thank you. How about a uh, shortened version of the summary? Uh, the the Captain Philip Rustisher spin. Uh, little guy Pi gets himself into trouble, um, pretending to be a jockey. Whoosh, swish, score. That's a two pointer, baby. I walk up to little Brian James. I go, fuck you. Wah, 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 wah. Boy, Watch me whip, whip. Watch me name. What is your fascination with that song? Um, is it its simplicity? It is simplicity, and you'll find that with millennials, their music, uh, the simplicity in it. You're not a millennial. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> You're whatever the old one is. Degeneration X. No, but I'm saying, but millennials are at the point now where simplicity is what gets their attention, and so like whether it's fashion, music, anything, that's what they want, and so they're pushing pushing it upon everybody else. You know, what we we had some old episodes where we have like uh, future sci-fi ones, mm-hmm. and it, it seems like in the future everyone's always wearing like a one jumpsuit. Sure, yeah, that's very simplistic. Thank you. Are we moving towards? Right. Unibodies with a zipper from your uh, nuts to your gullet. I'm predicting the future. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Fucking Gene Roddenberry over here. Thank you. Interesting facts. Woo. Boy, oh boy, do we have some interesting facts today. These are the kind of... Uh, do we really, or are you just hyping it up? Uh, we've got a number of them. I don't oh, know okay. how good they are, right. or if in fact they are interesting. And it's not something I'll comment during the section no. as mandated by law. Right. Conrad Rule is in effect, mm-hmm. whether he listens or not. I actually heard he's dead. Oh, so. last I heard he had a rear ear infection or something. You say a, a rare ear infection? Rear ear. Now, so is that like, is that, is that a, like a... Well, there's an inner a metaphor ear. metaphor for your ass. There's a front ear, there's an inner ear, and there's a rear ear. I think about like, it's. Just, I think you're talking about his asshole. Like no. He's got whatever day from the Low Blow podcast has. Could be. But uh, just don't comment on these to anyone, you know. Whatever. Don't talk about rear ears to anybody, please. <laughs> Mostly somebody... Of young age. But anyway, um, just absorb the facts that Jason has worked hard to find. Don't comment on them. I mean, you know what I miss? I miss Soap Man. The Soap Man? I miss the Soap Man and we'll his get, wife. Let's, let's get him back in here. Let's get them both in here. Let's get them both in here to watch a pilot with us. Yeah. Uh, release date, October 13th, 2003. That's something that happened. Okay. And you know what? October, that is not the summer. Usually we find these pilots are in a dumping ground in summer. This is not summer. This is the fall. No, it's starting to get chilly outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, filmed in Los Angeles, California. So maybe not so chilly over there. That's true. But still in, in the beginning of the television se- season. Bleh. Ooh, oh, yeah. thank you. Uh, this pro- show was built in the back of his back purse. Uh, produced and shown on Comedy Central. Okay. Produced, produced by Comedy Central. They said, we're going to do this. It's kind of like Netflix, how they produce and they pay for stuff now, and then they put it on Netflix. The uh, intro song called Gimme Everything, written by the Toilet Boys. <laughs> Never heard of them. That's funny. What's that? I've never heard of the Toilet Boys. It's funny. It's funny? <laughs> no, the name of the band is funny. Not the fact, the name of the band. I didn't say that fact is funny. I said that name of that band is funny, so it doesn't. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm squeaky clean right there. Okay. I just whipped it's, it's it, and I just nae What is your fan? Um, <laughs> stars Martin Kleba, Midget. You probably recognize A little him. person. Right. Well, same thing, right? Midget? Well, you, you can't get a home. Midget spinner? <laughs> um, Pirates of the Caribbean. He's the He's the... He's not the full size person in that. He's the small. He's the small person in that. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, guess what I did the other night? You went on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. <clears throat> no, try again. You did not go on the Pirates of the Caribbean. Correct. Ride? Nice. I watched the newest one. I watched the movie all the way through. Oh, really? So you've added that to your repertoire of very sh- like you can on one hand right now. Sure. Yeah, but no, the 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 latest, whatever the newest, newest one is. Uh, Dead Man Don't Tell Tales or something like that. I saw it from beginning to end. How was it? Stupid. 
<laughs> the kids loved it. My, my yeah. brother brought over. My brother had the idea. Said he's like, I got Directv. I want to cut the cord. I'm going to buy these two fire sticks. I know a guy that's going to jailbreak them. Oh, so you get all these things for free? Right. So we jailbreak them. He brings it over. Plug it in. Plug it in. Only thing that works is the movie part of it. Boo. The TV I, and all the sports stuff. I I've didn't. heard of that. Those jailbreak uh, fire Yeah. Sticks. So we're we're sending them back to the jailbreaker <laughs> to redo them. That's great, right? That's like going back to the crack house. <laughs> say, right, yeah. Hey, yeah. I think there's some <laughs> fucking baby powder in this or right. something. Like, what do you got to do? <laughs> yeah. So, but I did, I wanted to announce to everybody. 2018, I'm going to watch five movies in Pirates of the Caribbean, wow. Dead, Man's, Dead Man Don't Take Nothing is the first one. I got four more movies to watch in 2018. Good for you, brother. You can do it. Um, the, the can star- I get a high five for that shit? I would say so. <laughs> Martin Kleba, uh, he's also worked like pretty much nonstop. He's been in almost 100 different things. He's uh, 48 years old. Okay. So at the, at the time of this, he was probably, what, like uh, 30... Five-ish. Yeah. Uh, also stars Jamie Bergman, former Playboy centerfold. Um, this is the uh, widow, the lady whose uh, husband... Widow uh, Kula. Yeah. Um, she was also in Gone in 60 Seconds and Any Given Sunday. Okay, I like Any Given Sunday. That's the one with Al Pacino. Have you seen it? Yeah. You've seen that movie, too. It has Al Pacino in it. Of course I've There's seen it. There's a lot it. of Al Pacino movies you have not no, seen. No, I've seen almost all of them. Have you seen uh, Jack and Jill, the Adam Sandler movie with Al Pacino? No, I don't. Not, not cameos. I'm talking like really like... hoo Like uh, Dog Day Afternoon, Frankie and Johnny, um, uh, all, Injustice for All, Serpico. Uh, Titanic? He was not in that. Come on. Come on, man! Um... Jamie Bergman is uh, very attractive in this, and you can see her vagina in Playboy magazine. Uh, and also stars Jim O'Hare. He's the big fat detective guy. He was in Parks and Recreation. Oh, I, th- I thought I recognized him. That's you, re- cool. you recognize him from that. Interesting yeah. facts over. You know what? That's a lot of facts, and I appreciate them. You did a great job. I will, honestly, I'm a little disappointed in these facts. I, th- I thought for as long as this was. And his association with Comedy Central and not being crazy old, I felt like there should have been some more stuff out there. I really dug, and there's not a lot. You did a great job. Okay. You, I, don't be down on yourself. Remember 2018? Me and you, ying and both. Ying, ying and ying. No, we're ying and ying. I'm ying. And I'm ying. And together we're ying and ying. ying. Um, Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. The guy was little, but maybe we got some Twitter responses. We don't. Uh, what the fuck? I know. Do we? Oh, we don't have we don't have a promo, but we should talk about the promo because tomorrow, January second, um, the, a new podcast comes out from a good friend of ours. That's what I have here, but we don't have a promo for them. No, yet? they did not send that to us. But did they cut one? They have obviously done cut something. Hold on, a, no, actually, you know what? I do have one for them. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a, um, do, you have a do you have a headphone jack? No, I'm just gonna play it. Okay, loud. play it loud. Play it yeah. loud. Yeah, let's see here. here, here. <laughs> This is the old school way of doing things. This is a, a new show that I'm very excited for. Super excited. It's uh, by my good friend, uh, Scott, also known as Big E. And the show's called uh, Karaoke Big E. Hey, everybody. It's your favorite bodyguard here, Big E. And I was wanting to tell you about my upcoming FCF Network podcast called Karaoke Big E. Me and my co-host, Kevin Clark, are going to sing some songs karaoke style, have some laughs, and totally wreak havoc on your ear holes. We will be joined by a rotating cast of characters all telling the story of why they chose the songs they sang. So please join us every Tuesday on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcast app of choice. And remember, you can't be a star if you don't shine. And we'll definitely get the new and improved, you know, the the actual audio file, so it'll sound better. But that's a little sneak peek. A little sneak peek on your asses. Um, Ooh, this is a good one. Yeah, and it's it's it's. Um, I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm going to be on the first episode. I'm super honored for that. Um, yeah, you have not at the time of this recording, you have not yet recorded it. But no, I can only assume that you're going to have an excellent time. But I, I look on my I, I look on my iPod, uh, my uh, podcast app of choice right now. What are you singing? I'm downloading the promo right now, which which is what we just heard. Okay, what, what do you, can you tell people what you'll be singing on the show? 
<clears throat> I don't feel that I should do that because I don't okay. know. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell people what the show is about. Sure. Um, you got uh, Scott and you got Kevin. They're co-hosting, and every week, or most weeks, I'd say three out of four weeks, they're going to have a guest. And the guest is going to come heavy with two songs that mean something to them. They're going to talk a little bit about that song, um, not only from the person's personal experience, but also just the song in general, the artist, the year it came out, that kind of stuff. And then they're going to sing the song. Mm, yeah. Two or three of them are going to sing the song together. They're going to take a break. Then they're going to come back and do another show or another song, maybe that a, a guest has suggested or um, one that Biggie or Kevin wants to do. And then they're going to come and sing the second song from the guest. So it's going to be three songs sung karaoke style. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if there's a lot of shows out there like that, but Scott has such a love for singing. We thought this would be the perfect avenue to take advantage of that and give him finally give him his own program. He's been such a great contributor to this show. Uh, Drunken Lullabies. I think he recently hosted an episode of Low Blow, Broken Funny Bone, um, IBWIP. It's time for it, he, he's got he's cut his teeth. He's he's got his chops together now, and it's time to wreak havoc, as he said, on all of our ear holes by being uh, by being his own host of his own show. So good luck to you, Scott. I'm rooting for you. I'm going to be listening to the show every week. I'm excited, Blake, that you're going to be on that first episode, and I know that you're not going to tell us what those songs are. But uh, I cannot wait to hear you sing them. I'll tell you what the songs are. Uh, I'm going to do... That didn't take much to get it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously going to do a Hank Williams song because he's my idol, Hank Williams Sr. So I'm doing Hey Good Looking and a stick song. Um, that one, I'm not going to say the name of it, but a stick song. It was the first Mr. song... Mr. No. It was not... It's 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 a B-side. It's um, not one that you would probably think of but it was the first song i ever memorized the words to okay and these and again as being a guest on the show and being about ready to record these are songs that mean something to you yeah yeah so and th- there's stories behind them yeah i think it's it's a great premise for a I'm show i'm super excited biggie is excited i feel like biggie has put his time in and got his chops and it's time That's for him saying. to yeah yeah totally to spread his wings and, and i'm so glad i had the idea and created the show <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but, how, now, did you get some residuals? No. All, all I ask is for their friendship. That's all that I ask. That's all that matters. So, so far, they haven't given it to me. <laughs> well, what do you expect? You say <laughs> Kebbo's making it wrong all the time. Uh, all right. So let's break down this pilot for Knee High PI. I will say that it is over 70 minutes long. There's a lot of shit to go through. So we're going to kind of do it fast. Because sure. I, I don't want to be here all night. All right. I don't want to be here all night. No, I wouldn't either, but you're an hour into it already. All right. Well, Comedy Central, who made this, they got a television report. There's a wet T-shirt Make-A-Wish fundraiser at the Playboy Mansion, and someone was kidnapped. It was a lady named Nikki Ziering. Oh, my God. She is sexy as hell. God, she's so hot. Right? And um, she, apparently she's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like, like in a barn, an abandoned building or something. And, and you the- got all the bad guys sitting there, and she's tied up in a chair. I think they're like waiting for a ransom or something. And yeah. then you get a knock on the door. And then the guys, oh, they get, they, no one knows we're here. We're getting our guns out. Then we go outside and look. And then what do they see? A big, huge, uh, big, huge watermelon. Massive. I thought it was, at first, I thought it was Razor Ramon that went out there and oh, got did it. You? It did look a lot like That's him. That's funny. Um, they, they say, oh, there's no one out there. But he decides, I don't know what made him think, I'll bring this watermelon in. But right. he does. It was it, huge. And then the guys yell at him, go slice it up. They're yelling. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, like, he's like, slice it, don't put, it, uh, cut it in chunks, not slices. Yeah, yeah. And the guy's like, don't tell me how to... Anyway, so he's back there getting ready to cut up, and then the uh, the PI, the private detective for the show, he Hank, pops out. And kicks the guy's ass. Beats him up and takes out the other two guys, right? Yeah, and saves the Nikki, saves Nikki, the hot bitch, and he's like, hey... She's like... Uh, he, he She stands up and she towers over him because he's a midget. Right. Should we say should we say little person or midget? It, it doesn't, I don't think they care. You right. don't think so? Uh, I worry now. What do you want to say? Small person? Little person? Little person, big world. Okay. I'll, I'll say little person. Okay. Um, LP. Hmm? LP. Oh, I love an LP. Good LP. So, but no, he's um, talking to her and, uh, you know, basically he has sex with her. She, 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 she flashes she, the tits. Which doesn't flash to the camera, but I, flashes I think it was an error on the editor's end. They Very much yeah. so. Um, something so, wrong with that camera angle. So, And then here you got kind of a sweet rock and roll intro. Of Hank Dingo kind of taking care of business and whipping ass. Yeah, right? he's, it's it's very. It, I will say that it's too long. But there's a, the 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 screen is divided into four, and there's vignettes, and each it, it takes turns on them, and all throughout little, little little tidbit here, on the videos he's driving a blue car, 
in the actual show, he drives a black car. Oh, wow. But good, uh, good catch. They, they show him driving around and then beating people up and then you know basically hitting on girls. Just taking care of business, man. Be, living that P.I. life. The business. Giving him the business. Um, so after that, it goes to a mansion. There's an old man talking Warren. to his... Warren Mact... Mact- Mac Mac Macdeton. Yeah, I think that's right. Just say Warren. And he's talking to this old man Butler, and uh, they're they're rigging their long jockey. He's it's a big mansion, and the centerpiece going into the house is this lawn jockey, and they're putting like landmines out there. It's like apparently there's Chains. been a rash of of people stealing lawn jockeys. So like no one's getting their hand on mine. It means the world to me. My father gave it to me, so we're gonna rig it so no one steals it. Right, and then he's like, uh, "Did you you know? Did you put all the?" Um... <clears throat> Oh, that's right. So, um, yeah, so, some hot bitch comes out. She's she's probably what is she probably twenty four ish, just smoking hot. Like it's a trophy wife. At, oh, without a doubt. God, I wish I had the money for a trophy oh, wife. Well, right? I love. I've never had a trophy in my life. Uh, his wife comes up. You never had a trophy the, in your life? No, nope. I, I had a world's greatest dad thing, but I strongly suspect that was not real. <laughs> um, they uh, they bicker a little bit, and she's like, "I'm gonna get another martini." She goes in the house. Wake up the next morning, Warren comes out, and his lawn jockey is gone. He rushes to investigate, right? Right, and so the butler comes out, and, and like he's like he kneels down to check it, and he blows up because he put his foot on one of the Not doors. the butler, but the, the old man. Right? The old, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. the old yeah. man. He, he kneels down because he's like, oh, my God. He kneels down, and he goes, oh, shit, and boom, the, the landmine blows he up. He's dead. He, he gone. He did. Next scene, you have that hot bitch of his wife. She's uh, in her lawyer's office. Candy. Her name's Candy. And, uh, Candy. And the lawyer calls I her a hot slut. feel good. I, I don't know that. About Candy. Shows I both on the back of his songs, I guess. Good. I don't know. That's LL Cool J. Uh, the lawyer calls her a hot slut, which is pretty good. <laughs> and I've seen him in a lot of stuff before. He's a character actor. Yeah. He's been around for sure. Um, he leaves a video will, her husband. And he says, "I'm going to leave you everything that I have, but I, I on on the on the uh, whatever like yeah, the exception that I need to be buried with my one condition. Jockey. One I condition, need, thank you. Well, so, of course, the lawn jockey has been stolen, so she's not going to get any of this money. So she's like, we got to find this lawn jockey. She's talking to that butler. His name is Worthington, and he's like, you know what? We do need to find it. Let's hire a private detective. Yeah, right. So a uh, private dick. Yeah. Why? Why that was they... that was one of the. You're ten minutes into it, and you've already heard a bunch of really. It's a very e- easy, immature, a very easy punchline. Blue, yeah, sexual. It's, it reminds me in that way of the like the Elvira pilot we watched. Exactly. You know? you know what? You're right. Uh, very much so. Uh, come to find out that Candy used to work at the Blue Zebra. Yeah. Uh, before she met Warren and got all his money, so um, uh, the butler calls uh, Hank. His office. His office, and it's his mom. And that's she was on Saturday Night Live. Yep, that's Nora Dunn. Yes, and she she's the secretary. And for some reason, like she's hitting like on anything that moves. Oh yeah, the the, the UPS guy she has sex with. She's mm. she's hitting to... on Worthington over the phone. Thank you. Yeah, she's fucking around with the UPS guy. And the next scene, uh, Dingo is he's in an alley driving a GTX. This is the black one you mentioned versus the blue one in the intro. And uh, you hear a lot of like fluty spy sneaky music. You know. Yeah. Like uh, Magnum P.I. kind of stuff. Sure, yeah. And so Dingo then climbs a fire escape ladder and enters what turns out to be his own office and is immediately attacked by a black cat. I don't know. I, don't know. I think I think there's just stupid little things that people think are funny <clears throat> and they just add them in. They don't mean anything and they're not that funny, sure. honestly. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that on my turbulence. Um, he ends up meeting his cousin, uh, Bentley, who is black. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Bentley got in trouble uh, with the law for buying penny stocks. Yep, making and, a ton of money off of penny stocks. So he's he's forced to work there after school as a penance. Um, Hank is given the uh, the stolen jockey case from his mom. Right. Uh, they go to the house and he can't he can't hit the door knocker and so which is the big ha ha joke because he's short. Just uh, knock on the door. Just, just knock on the wood. Why just, do you have to yeah, hit the knocker? Thank you. You're welcome. Um. And, he, and they said, he, "What's so great about being a private dick anyway?" He said, "Broads, broads, broads." Right. That's that's his main focus. Let me ask you this: Do you, th- do you think do you think uh, Hank Dingo is scoring with the broads so much because he's handsome, because he's a private detective, or because ladies want to mark a midget off their fucket list? 
Or a uh, combination of the three. I think it's because they want to mark a little person off their bucket list. Oh, number four I didn't mention. Okay. Sure. Um, Just by trying to be politically correct. Why start now? Huh? Why start now? I've always been politically correct. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, um, Hank and uh, Bentley start interviewing Candy and come to find out, uh, Hank's like, oh, did you used to dance at the Blue Zebra? And he, she's like, yeah, I w- you're Jugsy Malone. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, but now they call me Candy. And, you know, and so then... She's telling her sob story, and then Hank, like, jumps in her lap, and Hank, like, consoles her. Yeah. It's, um... She is... Like, she's very sexy. That's not necessarily the type of girl I'm into, but, like, I get it. Like, she is a piece of ass, You wouldn't right? You wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers. I don't know why she would bring crackers into bed to begin with, but in that scenario, no, I would not kick her out. Do you think that you... Her and crackers could fit on your full-size bed? (laughs) Well, Um, I would say that uh, Jugsy would be on top of me, and then I would see if I could try to balance some of those crackers on that ace. (laughs) Politically correct. Nice. Um, Hank, uh, let's see. Okay, so they have a, 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 a bit of a flash bag. Back, uh, Jugsy has a flashback of her dirtbag ex husband, like accosting her uh, her ex husband in Worthington. Yeah, and then the police arrive and they said, and she says he screams, "I'll get you and your lawn jockey! I'll get all the lawn jockeys!" <laughs> as he's hauled away, which seems odd. Right, it's just like okay, so whatever. So that's that's their first person they're going to look into. Uh, they go out and check the scene of the crime, and he, he's standing out there. And clue number one, he finds a grain of sand. And Bentley's like, "That's you're just that's just a piece of sand." He's like, "No, that's not just any piece of sand." Bag it and tag it. Bag it and tag it. He's like, "I'm not bagging a piece of sand." Uh, foreshadow, he does. Uh, uh, then Dingo's like, "Wait a minute." He he wants to to interview the Worthington, uh, Worthington the butler, and basically starts beating the shit out of him. Yep. That's how he interviews people. He just beats the shit out he of them. He beats the hell from them, and then an ambulance arrives and takes him away. And the police are there, too. It's Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec. He's, he's the detective. He calls Jim... Um, uh, Hank calls Jim a faggot. And I think... Oh, yeah. and I think, I think, ah, that's... Well, can't do that. You can't do that now. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Even back then, it seems like, why, why, uh, why, why chance it? Right. And so then they, they yeah, so they deal with him. Then he goes to in an ambulance, and then the cops are like, hey, he won't, he's not going to press charges. You got lucky this time, but we're going to get you. You can't be doing it this way. Yep. He's like, whatever, fuck you. And he says something about fucking the blo- the, the, the female cop. It was very attractive as well. She was cute. Um, so then, uh, Bentley and Hank decide to go to stake out the blue zebra because they want to talk to Donnie. So they stake it out all night long. Donnie, I guess being the ex, uh, husband. ex husband and his, uh, Donnie Wiener is his name. Um, and they catch him the next morning during the stakeout by, a, by sending, um, his mom's attack cat that attacked him earlier yeah. onto Donnie. And so and the, the cat like tackles him and's on his back. And then, the Hank, uh, like, freaks him out, and, and, like, he beats the shit out of yeah. that guy, too. And then the cop, the, the two Ambulance, cops show up. the cops, the, cops, the whole thing. And they're like, he didn't press charges, but eventually we're going to get you. And there's another gay joke. Hank makes another gay joke towards Jim. Yeah. Which is odd. It's, it, there, it, any, every single race or sexual preference is made fun of in this show. Yeah. Jugsy uh, then is, finds out that she has hired another guy and is having sexual intercourse with him. He's Australian, Didi. You might want to watch this one. He's Australian. Check that. He's a hunk. And he, yeah, and he he can he does origami with his penis. Yes, genital oh. origami, puppetry of the penis. The guy starts making things out of his cock meat. I don't I don't understand. It's like it's basically he's he's naked and you see him from like the waist up. And then he's like, he has his hands on his, his junk town. And they hear it. It's, it sounds like, a, almost like cards flipping. Yeah. It was just odd. It was very uh, odd. My dick has never made that noise. Oh, never, ever. One time, I, I swear to God, I heard it say, kill me, but I've never heard it. I, like, I've heard it crack before. I've heard mine crack before. Like you're cracking your back? It was, yeah, it was kind of like that. Yeah, dick bone? Who doesn't have a dick bone? Crack your dick bone? Man, I cracked that dick bone all night. Anyway, so Hank says, hey, we got to get some information. He goes and takes Bentley, and they go uh, talk to his buddy, Fudgy. He's a hobo, and he lives in a cardboard house. Uh, you walk into that cardboard, cardboard house, it's a box. It, it's it's just a, like a refrigerator box in an alley. It opens up into a whole room. Would it be funnier if it was like really nice inside? Yeah, it, it, you know, that's, that's the one thing that I thought was, 
when you you know it was funny that it was a cardboard box that led into something that you didn't know it was going but to. But it was like it a, should have been a, a really nice place, and he had, should have had food and stuff. It was but, like a big open room that was kind of dingy and cruddy, and they had yeah a bunch of rotten food and stuff. It would have been funny if it was like super nice. Sure, right? I think so too. I think so. Um, like like maybe like obnoxiously obvious like view like a penthouse up on the thirtieth right. floor or something. Uh, Fudgy says that he thinks that it could be international and the Arabs or brown people are the ones that are taking yep. the lawn jockeys. Now this is okay to say because this is hot off the heels of nine eleven, so it's, it's it's time and appropriate to make fun of the Arabic people according to Comedy Central. Um, anywho, Hank uh, Hank calls the. Um, the hot detective for an emergency well he he yeah he he's like we need some i need to know what the cops know because they're on the case too yeah and so he somehow makes it like a, a fire 911 fire call so the hot cop he knows she hears on the thing and she's like oh my god that's that's where hank is flies over there and he basically tricks her and she shows up to his office and he's in a cowboy hat naked with a Sunday and some handcuffs. He's thinking he'll seduce information out of her. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I saw a, a little person's chest. But wait, there's more. She gets pissed off, gets up to leave. Next thing you know, you see his buttocks. She is not into this at all from the beginning. She's like, I cannot believe She's it. had sex with him before. She has? Oh, yeah, she's slept with him before. How can you tell that? Uh, because he, he mentions it in the with the butler ambulance oh, part. Oh, really? And then... She's like, this is not going to work this time. Okay. Well, he yeah, like he wanted he call, to call her a sugar tush. And yeah, well, I tell you what, he's got a sweet little ass, doesn't he? Oh, he does. And Molly, the 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 um, stewardess, uh, wanted to make sure that we mentioned that he has. Oh nice yeah, tushy. she liked that. Uh, Bentley apparently has done some online digging and has uh, found a lawn jockey liberation front. Um, so it's like this whole group that. I, I, they don't know what it is, but they found information on it. It's like, you know what? The lawn jockeys are missing. Let's go take a look. What, what, could, what could hurt to go to this group and check out what they're all about? So they go to one of their meetings. And it turns out just to be like a little person meeting. So I don't know if it really has – this is something I didn't understand necessarily. If, if these little people were actual jockeys to some degree or they were just kind of tongue-in-cheek joking about their actual size and stature by calling themselves lawn jockeys. But either way – it was a meeting of all these these small folk there. And then uh, Hank stays late with Bentley after the meeting and kind of talks to the guy in charge, which he, he almost looks like a wizard. He had like a big robe on, a weird outfit. And so they're talking to this guy, and then they beat the shit out of this guy too. And it's the whole thing over again. You know, you got the ambulance coming. You got the police coming. And uh, I don't know. They, they, they're looking for Rochester, which apparently is the name of the lawn jockey in question. And then they torch... Not only do they kick his ass, but they Hank he, he torches the guy too. And then they, yeah, he goes after him. He puts his uh, welding mask on and then torches him. That's how he uh, does his uh, uh, what do you call it interrogation. Yeah, and this time he gets arrested and he let, he's let go the next morning. And his mom is she shows up after Bentley bails him out, and his mom is very upset. Yeah, she's like, "Oh, honey pie," and she comes up to him and picks him up and is like, and he's like, "Mom, come on," you know. Bentley says, you know what, while you're in there, we, it turns out we solved the case. Everyone that you beat up actually was involved in some fashion. And now he's back on the, uh, he's, but he goes back on the case because he finds out that the the jockey that they recovered is actually a fake one, right? Yeah, because Donnie, Kevin, and the butler found a fake one, were painting it to be just like it, and they were using that to his ransom. It wasn't the actual the people who stole it, but they were up to no good in regards to the ransom. Mm-hmm. Um, come to find out the sand that the piece of sand that they found was from the Middle East. Um, so Hank's like, we gotta, we gotta catch these guys. What's the best way to catch the guy that keeps stealing lawn jockeys? I'm the size of a lawn jockey. Dress me up like a lawn jockey. So he's out there waiting all night. He gets pissed and rained on. Uh, dog, dog pees on him. He gets rained on, and then God pisses on him with rain. And then he f- he takes a drink out of his flask. Then all of a sudden, finally falls asleep. He's kidnapped. He's kidnapped. Boom. He awakens in a lawn full of lawn jockeys in <laughs> Iran. <laughs> Not in our minds in Iran. In, yeah, and there was when you say there was a yard full of there was thousands of them. Yeah, he sees uh, Rochester, the lawn jockey in question, and attempts to move it, but it's far too heavy for him to move. Sure. So um, here, I believe, I believe the sheik. The, the guy who's the sheik was the soup Nazi from oh, Seinfeld. okay. 
And Makes the sheik sense. wants to uh, be in the It wasn't Guinness. quite as obnoxious as the soup Nazi on no, this, no. but it was so little. I think, that, I think this sheik would gladly give anyone soup. Oh, yes. And he's, he wants to be in the Guinness Book of World Records by having the most lawn jockeys. He Do you think he get, makes bubbles with his soup? Uh, he very well could have, I, I suppose. I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> it was funny. I was trying to connect to with you. Who? I was trying to connect with you as a person, me and you. I have an inside joke just between me and you. He got. He did. He probably made bubbles with this soup. All right. Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> Come on. We don't ever get time to talk about anything except pilots. Oh. I want to have a conversation. <laughs> have pilots. <laughs> when was the last time we had a conversation? I didn't? don't know your middle name. <laughs> it's Warren. Mine too. G. Um, <laughs> three. Three. One. Two. Um, the sheik is talking to a white businessman who I guess it turned out to be an ambassador or something. And like once the sheik leaves, Dingo approaches the, the businessman. He's like, psst, psst. hey man, get me out of here. He's like, you're a white guy just like me. Help me escape. And then the, and then he like he doesn't or something. I don't understand. It got weird. He, he was all high and he was like, oh, I, I can I can get you out of here, but it's gonna take like paperwork. I gotta do the proper paperwork. Like it's gonna a take year, us six right? to nine yeah. months. <laughs> He's like, that's not gonna work, man. So. Um, he attempts to leave on his own, running around the state and like through the mansion, and he comes across a celebrity oh. pornography like uh, but, exhibit it, in his house, and, and they're like old and unattractive. Celebrities. It's all the, like Whoopi Goldberg, Larry King, uh, Larry King, Martha the, Stewart, Martha Stewart, Oprah Winfrey, everybody that is not attractive, you know. So he's like, oh my eyes, my eyes. It's pretty rough. He then goes to another room, uh, and then this fat guy he goes into a bathroom. And then this fat guy comes in, so he's hiding. And this fat guy just does this diarrhea and shit scene that just it's, goes on way too fucking it's, long. It's an unbelievable noise of just asshole explosion. And it's, it, a ca- oh. it's a cacophony of flatulence. Nice. High five that. It, it, if it was 12 seconds, it would have been funny. But it goes on for a minute and a half. And it's disgusting. So then He's fi- looking at uh, like a porno magazine, but it's feet. Because that's what's hot in an Arab land. Yeah, because they can't see people, girls' feet. Yeah. Uh, so he he finally, you know, the guy leaves, and then he he goes, "Oh my 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 lungs, my lungs, my lungs." So then, finally, Hank calls Bentley somehow, and uh, he's like, "His mom." He's like, "Where's my mom?" And he's like, "She's having a threesome." He's like, "She's making a she's making a sandwich." Yeah, she's making a sandwich. But she's here. actually getting sandwiched by a couple of dudes. Uh, Hank then finally goes into another room and finds uh, the the sheik's harem, and it's just oh my it's God. a pool. Of, this is uh, unbelievable, right? Every woman in there was beautiful. Every single there was twenty women and in there. They're all room. like Arab ladies, too. and they were all beautiful. And they they were supposed to be there for the sheik's. And there was some sheik sex jokes earlier. What but can, what can I do to get to that know. level? I don't know, but he fucks every one of them, and they all fall asleep. He, he fucks them, and he walks away. Yeah, he fucks them unconscious. He walks out of the room, smoking a cigarette, and he's the cock walk. Oh boy, he is a he's a swordsman. I tell you what. Uh, then you got back in the home country. Bentley visits Fudgy, the informant, in his cardboard box for help, and he comes across like a helpful file. Right, yeah, something about Clarence Thomas. Uh, right, because that was the original. Oh, Uh-oh. I just think myself. <laughs> Originally, when it first started. That was the newspaper article that Clarence Thomas's dawn jockey had been stolen. Okay, that's gotcha. how he ties it back. And so he's he cut, he cut that paper clipping out. He's like, ah. So Bentley decides to dress up as a, just a weird black guy and sees Clarence Thomas at a strip club and says, "Hey, I know how. I know where your lawn jockey is." Yep, it was a great scene because there's so many hot n- Toby, nearly naked ladies. Yeah, Clarence Thomas's lawn jockey's name is Toby. That is the. You can't have a more racist sentence than that, right? That's pretty rough, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. Th- then do you think I can call a black person Toby right now? Hell no, you could. I would not do that. So that's what I'm saying. And can I say? Could, could I call a black person a lawn jockey right now? No, you cannot. Eh, maybe. Can I call a person Clarence Thomas? <laughs> if that was her name, I suppose. See? Um, if Hank is uh, found out in, in this pa- palace, this mansion, whatever, and then he uh, he's, he's being trying, chased. Yeah, he's being chased, and so he ends up yeah. going to the uh, stable. And then the first horse is like, "Oh, that's too big." And then the next next stall over is like a miniature horse, he's like, little puppy, little puppy or something. He's like, "That's too small." And then he comes racing out of there in a dirt little little dirt mini. mini you think mini he's bike. gonna come out in like a horse that's yeah, the size, but, but not at all. It's a, it's a mini bike. bike, and he's being pursued through the <clears> desert. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Justice Clarence Thomas got the president to approve a mission to uh, retrieve Thomas's lawn jockey. He got military helicopters coming in. Yeah, the Marines. 
they steal some of the hot broads too. Yeah, that's pretty good. And they kept going, "Is this the one? Is this the one?" And they finally get a picture and they find out which one is Toby. They take it and they get away. And so then we see um, the chase of Hank Moore. Uh, there's these two Arabs in a Rolls Royce. They're chasing him, and he ducks them out to where they fall into a quicksand factory puddle. Yeah. Um, there's also this is I think that's the, is that where the scene where the guy makes out with a camel. Uh, that's coming up. That yeah. is no, awful. The, the camel interaction, kissing, uh, cuts back to when they're in town. The sheik and his buddy. He's like, go talk to that camel. It, it knows something. And the guy starts talking to this camel. He's like, I know you know what you you need to talk. And all of a sudden, they start making out. The ridiculous. camel and the guy is completely ridiculous. Uh, they cut back to the two guys that are in the car in the quicksand, and they're playing cards because I they're like they were freaking out because they're like we're gonna die, we're gonna die. The next thing they cut to them, they're like playing cards because quicksand is slow in actuality well this whole time too they they uh while hank is being chased um he doesn't know that the military has come and taken rochester the mm-hmm. lawn jockey right. so the, that is en route back to the u.s uh, and then the, uh, the whole time too we see reno 911's coming up next they got a little a little thing I at know. the bottom of the screen it's a real time stamper um hank is trying to evade his captors by hiding in things such as food camel poop human like yeah camel shit and uh, he's he just you name it he's hiding in it and popping out it and beating up these guys. Yeah, he tricks the sheik and uh, the sheik follows him to uh, the up the top of the steps of this uh, like a construction site or something, which is right? the the quicksand place where they make yeah. quicksand. And uh, he's he's in the buff again, um, and he punches the sheik and the sheik falls on top of the car and they finally the quicksand finally because they're heavier so they fall through. Yep. They get back. Um, the next scene is Bentley and uh, Hank's mom. They're at the office. Like, well, and we haven't heard from Hank. Hope he's doing all right. Yeah. And the UPS guy, who she's had sex with many times, sure. comes in. And he says something about having a big package. Do you think that happens for real? Do you think UPS guys are having sex? I with hope these? so. They work hard. I really do. I hope they do. Because I, I think after you know a hard day of work, they probably don't smell great. They're probably on a bit of a time crunch. I feel like they have a lot of things going against them. So I'm with you, though. I hope they're having sex. With I hope lady. so. At they, least some they, of those they earn it. They yeah. earn it. Do you think any of them ever come to the door and say, I've got a package just for you? I was watching a porn the other day, and it was, I think it was from like Austria or something. It was in a hotel. It was obvious it was in a hotel room. You could tell by the comforter <laughs> and the light fixture. And this girl walks in. And she doesn't have anything. Obviously, she has a strap on on. And she's got a pizza box, all right. And yeah. she's like, and and she has an Aust- Austrian accent. She's like, you order the pizza with a lot of su- a big sausage, and then she opens the cardboard box and you know obviously the strap. Big delicious pizza. Right. The big. You've seen this one. <laughs> Have you seen this one? Yeah. Yeah. Have you? No, no. It's pretty hardcore. There's. It's just two girls. It's pretty hardcore, but it's funny because she's in this Australian accent. She's like, you ordered the big fat sausage pizza. <laughs> and no, then she, nothing hotter than those Germanic languages. <laughs> and then she proceeds to just just do unruly things just with this un, huge undoing the husband stitch. Was, no, it, yeah, it was it was oh, it was I I I I took care of business to it, oh, so it wasn't that boy. bad. Uh, anyway, speaking of packages, Hank falls out of that package. He's safe. He's back in the office. Um, Bentley goes through and recaps what all really happened while Hank was gone. Um, Rochester's returned to Jugsy, and she gets her money. So then they go. They go to uh, I guess the funeral, right? Yep, they go to the funeral. Uh, they walk out, and basically Hank and Bentley become a team. Yeah, they're, they're both on, wearing they're suits. On, they get in the car. It's a missing child case, right? Yeah. And it has to do with Michael Jackson. They said, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a scant six years later, Michael Jackson is murdered by his doctor. Crank Yankers is up next, followed by Reno 911 and the awful cartoon live action show, The Kid Notorious. The end. Here come that turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. That was a lot. I thought we got through it fairly quickly. We did the best we could, folks. It, this show didn't work. Um,. It yeah. was it was a, it was a movie, but they were they were wanting it to be a, a TV show. Absolutely, I I don't know. I I think I'm getting soft in my old age. You know, it's 
I think this could have worked as a show. Really? Yeah, if it was a half hour at a time. Maybe a half hour. And I, I think there is an audience for this type of humor. Oh, sure there is. It's, it's not it's, me. It's, and this is the audience. I'll tell you what. I, I call this the Dumb and Dumber audience. Okay. If you watch Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber and you think that is a great movie that's funny, yeah. this is that's you're going to enjoy this. Now, if you watch, let's say, what's another, what's a, what's a funny movie? Airplane. Airplane, and you don't think it's funny, yeah. But you think Dumb and Dumber is funny, yeah. This is that's the show for you. I think there, is, like I said, yeah. There's definitely an audience for this, but it's not for me. Like I, sorority, I, I don't like, like, like not, not sorority, but fraternity guys, right? Sorority boys. Frater- fraternity boys. I don't know. I don't think that's it. Is that it? <laughs> Is it sorority? Is that where guys dress up like girls to be in a sorority? Yes. I think it's sorority boys or something like that. Those are the kind of people that like this show. All right. <laughs> well said. Um, what, what What did you, what do you think? Why didn't this work? <clears throat> Blake. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to tell you. Was it that long of a pause? I feel like, like over two seconds I feel like is a long pause. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Captain, my captain? No, but they were predictable jokes. They're fraternity jokes. It Everything was predictable. The storyline, I knew what was going to happen before it happened. And the jokes were, they were cheap. They were cheap, cheap, cheap. Anyone could do these jokes. Thank you. They're not intelligent. They're not. These are run-of-the-mill, blue-collar uh, get her done kind of mm-hmm. jokes, you know. This is Bill Engvall. This is Larry the Cable Guy. This is sure. um, just this is easy money. Yeah, for real, easy money. Um, like the toilet scene was disgusting. Like I said, twelve seconds, I would have laughed. A minute and a half, I wanted to throw There's up. A lot. I a wanted lot to of throw flatulence. up. At one point, because uh, Molly came in probably about forty minutes into it, so she only watched thirty-five minutes of it. Yeah, roughly. And she just commented about how she was losing IQ points as she was watching. For it. sure. And that's how I felt too. Like I felt dumb. Yeah. Or even dumber after watching it. Um, I would say, yeah, if this were to keep going, this is a, a half hour comedy. I like that there's no laugh track. Yeah, that, that um, was good. I, I think you could probably get away with two to four seasons of this. You know, uh, just a new adventure every week. You get you get ten. There's all kinds of cases. Of yeah, all yeah, kinds of all, cases. It's different cases. It's just just silliness, absurdist. Like I like absurdist, but I like intelligent absurdist. Sure. This is just dumb, absurd. Mm-hmm. You know, this is just stupid. You, you throw enough tits and and, and dick, dick jokes. jokes. Yeah, people are gonna laugh and come back. I think. I don't know why this didn't survive. Honestly, I, I think this is this is the time for this show. Okay. This this marks. A point where in comedy century history where stuff like this and crank anchors and the man show and stupid shows like kid notorious or uh reno 911 kind of it's it's goofy humor yeah you know i think i think reno 911 had it was ridiculous but i think there was some i don't know i liked it there's some, there's okay some okay stuff with reno yeah. 911 but it's also we you know we've been through those guys and we you know we've seen all their stuff and it's all kind of it's goofy. It's absurd. It's goofiness. It's yeah. Smart and dumb. Um, but you know what? Here we are talking about it. There are other people talking about this too. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright, upright position. position. Around the world, people had access to this show, and around the world, people viewed it. There's a score out there on IMDb, the Internet Movie Database from uh, 10. Possible points. Blake, how do you think people scored knee-high PI? <clears throat> I can envision a bunch of sorority guys at their laptops on IMDb. I'm going to say 6.5. Wow. Really ran it through the numbers, checked your list twice. I don't, I don't know if that score was naughty or nice, but i tell you right now, this is a 5.5 from 96 ratings. Uh, viewer reviews cut off at the knees. I think that's probably a joke. Oh wow, that's um, that's not PC. One out of ten scars. This is from Sheldon Obit from the United States. Uh, this is one of those very special movies where one continually says to oneself, "It has to get better," and it never does. <laughs> right. 
I find it hard to believe that anyone would invest time or money in making this simple-minded dross and that I have watched the whole thing. Looks like it was made by a bunch of third graders, judging by all the toilet humor. One of the worst movies I have ever seen. Hmm. Oh, Sheldon. Um, who, who's the guy making out with the camel? That's from a who, who Daddy from Hollywood. Uh, the movie was pretty entertaining. A midget private investigator? Little person. Jesus. I know. That's terrible. This show is so PC. Um, the writer has to have an amazing... Or CP. Now, what does that mean? Catch pilots. Oh, thank God. Um, the writer has to have an amazing sense of humor. The funniest thing about the movie is when a guy actually makes out with a camel, there has to be some kind of award for that. Maybe MTV's best kiss on screen. Nice. So, who, who daddy, uh, really enjoyed this um, for reasons that may be aligned with his beliefs on bestiality. bestiality. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, I don't know. I get, you know, I, I, I'm interested to how they got how they got that camel to make out with that guy like that. And to be honest with you, I like to know what their tongue feels like. I bet they have. I bet the guy had camel food on the side peanut, of his face. Peanut, peanut, peanut butter and jelly. First, you take the peanuts and you pick them. You pick them. Then what? Take peanuts and you smush them, smush them. Then you take the peanuts and you spread them, spread them. That guy's really erotic there. It, for a kid's, for a kid's. And there's, there's kind of like some swaying and dance moves to that too. Right? Yeah, and I learned that like in second grade. I was I think I learned that in first grade. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, it's, that is a sexy song. Peanut butter and jelly is an erotic Because you go up and go, peanut, peanut butter, jelly. Yeah, it's like you're doing cabaret dancing, right? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And then you take the jelly and you... Uh, spread it. You spread it. Now, see, we had a... Uh, then you take the jelly and you smear it. You smear oh. it. And then you rub it all... Like uh. you're rubbing it all in your body. <laughs> I didn't even think... I, boy, that's a memory that's just locked away. <laughs> we, and we opened it up on Couch Pilot's Podcast. Oh, let's, can we roll down a window? I'm getting a little hot in here all of a sudden. Oh, boy. Is that better? Yeah, breath breath of fresh air. One to seven. One being the worst. Seven is the best. That's the scale we're working with from the 1990s television sitcom on NBC, affectionately and accurately known as Wings. They made almost 200 episodes of that program, and I tell you why. It was the greatest show ever made. So we take in the, the intro and the outro from Wings, and we apply it to our show, as well as the rating system based off of their characters. One being the worst. Roy Biggins. Seven being the best. That's Brian, Brian Hackett. Hackett. Captain Philip Phyllis, rest assured, I turn to you. How do you rate knee high pi? When I first saw knee high pi, I was thinking it was going to be a cartoon. I probably would have enjoyed a cartoon more. Um, this was too long. Okay, I I laughed a few times out of boredom. Like I laughed to keep myself awake. That's that's you fighting off insanity, is what it sounds like. Right, uh, but. To the request of Miles, I'm giving this a little person butt bump. An oily butt bump too. That, oh, that kid he was, was oiled, oiled down. Yeah. I'm giving it a three. It was it was <clears throat> it was not something I would recommend, but I had to give it the bump, so I gave it a three. I think I'm right there with you, but like Sans bump, I think I have to give this a two. This sucked. Um the, the jokes are not in my wheelhouse. Well, this is an odd case where I genuinely dislike the pilot, but I could understand it being like sure. a series for like two seasons or something. Sure. Um, just, he, just Hank did funny. a good. He he Hank did a good job. I think so. It's just much. it's just a shitty it's just shitty it, humor. Like if if it had it was, if it was thirty minutes, we would be our scores would be two points more. I think if it was, it, but it was just so. Long, so much of the same thing. The private detective genre can be done right. And I think I gave a perfect seven to... Oh, shit. What's the Adam West one we did? Oh. Uh, it was written by Conan O'Brien and Robert Smeagol. Smeagol. It was... Um, Gosh, I forget the name of it. I know which one you're talking about. I think the name of the show is the guy's name. Look Well. Look it's Well. Look Well. Yeah. And boy, I gave, really, that was like your first seven. I think you ever gave. No, I think the first seven was Action Family with Chris oh, Elliott. That's true. But Look Well, I thought was very funny. They did an awesome job. He was great with that. It can be done. The the funny private detective genre, which is a very slim and odd genre, which we've now hit on twice. It can be done well. Unfortunately, that one didn't succeed either. 
I got to give it a two. I did not care for this. Okay. I was not happy with it. And with those measly, cruddy little scores, we closed the book on Knee High P.I., and we're never going to speak of it again. Ever. But we're not done. So many other pilots out there. And you know what? We've got the time. We're not going anywhere. Where else are we going to be? You know what? Wait till 2018, our man. We're flying. We're flying the. We're flying straight into the sunset. 2018. I agree with that. And you know what? If, they, if our numbers continue to dwindle, maybe we'll fly just directly into the sun. <laughs> you know what? Wouldn't bother me if I died. <laughs> I, I'm okay with dying. I've admitted to. Oh, I've admitted to to suicide tw- in two podcasts lately. Yeah. Low blow in this one. Yeah, you gotta. I might. I need to be on watch. You gotta ride. <laughs> Join us next time, won't you, please? When we watch the pilot episode of The Boys. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Harry Rufkin and Eddie Ryan, a television comedy writing team, live radically different lives away from the office. Harry is a swinging bachelor who chases women all of his free time. While divorced and remarried, Eddie must contend with both his current spouse and his ill-tempered ex-wife. You can find the entire episode by subscribing Couch Pilots in Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or... Go to YouTube, and, and you, you know, know what to do, YouTube. Tube. What year was that? Um, oh, that's fine. I thought you said it. Never mind. Don't worry about it. 100? Okay. 100, maybe? That sounds good. Uh, yeah. What do you think about that? Sounds like the odd couple. I'm yeah. ready I'm ready to do it. I, I know about divorce. Yeah, yeah. I know about bitchy ex-wives. Yeah. So maybe I can relate. I want to say 1900 adds 7 plus 4. That's, that's right in my wheelhouse. I was born. I think, yeah. I think, so no, it won't be a year for the roses, right? I didn't fuck anybody when I was born. You could say in 1974 that I was fucked because my mom and dad fucked to make me in, in 75. I think some could say that. I know that I won't. Um, go to Couch Pilots. I feel like my dad's been fucking me my whole life. Jeez. Go to CouchPilotsPodcast.com. We are available on a variety of social media platforms, different ways to contact us. It's all there. CouchPilotsPodcast.com. The name the name of this show is Couch Pilots. It is a podcast. You put those things together. You put a .com at the end. You got our website. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you can also check us out on Twitter and Instagram at CouchPilotsPod. We would love to have you there. Follow us and do all that stuff. Uh, also, we are on Facebook at Couch Pilots Podcast. <clears throat> you can put Couch Pilots in. Um, there is a band called Couch Pilots, but, but they they suck. It's the worst band I've ever heard. I've never heard a band that made me want to cut myself as much as that band. The band uh, they sound like shit, like human <laughs> shit. Uh, call nine ten Pilots one. Um, if you're listening to this show. Oh my God! What kind of life do you have? It's surely enough time to call nine ten pilots one, right? Yeah, and definitely you should put it in your phone as a widget, a hot contact or whatever. That way, just whenever it, you don't have to call and you don't have to talk to us about this pilot, talk to us about your life. Call us once a day. You know what? Just just like the vitamins, one a day that help you get this. This show will have. This is going to be a way for you. It's it's cathartic to call us. Lay us lay your problems on us. Give us uh, tips about you know upcoming stock penny stocks whatever you know. Let right. us let us know. I I would love to do a whole show of like one week we just get so many voicemails that we just do the whole first half of the show is just talking. Oh, that'd be voicemail. great. Um, you can also check out our Patreon page, which is patreon.com backslash couch pilots. Um, we have four different tiers of uh, donation and rewards. Check it out. We went over it last show, but uh, check it out. And like I said, if you can't do it every month, we understand. If you want to do it one month, that's fine. But there's a lot of cool little prizes there. So check that out. We have a couple of people that have kind of subscribed to that and are, are giving us a, a small commitment every month. And we super appreciate That's really generous. And uh, if you want to be one of those people, oh, good golly, not only we get everything on the page concerning the rewards, but our undying affection as well. And thank you to L.A. Lance and uh, Down Under Didi yep. for their donations. Captain Philip, rest assured, um, we went off over so much today. I'm so excited <clears throat> for what the future in 2018 brings for both of us. Anything else you'd like to say to all of our frequent flyers before we go? No, not really. I just have some final thoughts. Oh, like Jerry Springer. Okay, yeah. Oh, Do I just, am I stealing that from him? I didn't think about it when I wrote it. Well, he, he at the end of the show, he has final thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't, don't apologize to me. Apologize to the good, honest, hardworking people at the Jerry Springer show. It, 
two things. First of all, uh, anybody out there that I trust, uh, if you've done ecstasy, tell me what it's like because I want to know. And second of all, if you're going to get high one night with your buddies, turn this pod, this pilot on. Otherwise, don't waste your time. What is... Um, are you are you looking to do ecstasy? Um, I'm curious. I, you hear a lot of different things. Like you talk to one person and it's like, oh, it was like this. You talk to another person and oh, it was like this. I want to know from somebody that I know what ecstasy is like. Like how long does it last and what's the come crash down? You want to know because you're interested in trying it, or uh, or just you're just curious. Curiosity kills the cat. All right. Well, well how much does it cost? <laughs> I'm interested in how much, like, if I was to ask somebody right. to buy some Where, where would I go to buy some? <laughs> no, not where. I don't want to implement anybody. But, but how much would it cost to, and what unit of measurement do I ask? <laughs> Just, One tib tab, please. <laughs> One failed pilot, please. <laughs> I'll have one galorp of uh, ecstasy. Jason, I am looking forward to 2018 with you, sir. I, is there going to be one? Clink. Yeah, a, of course okay, there is. Okay. 2018, we're already one in. All right. Only 50, 51 more to go. Oh, my God. Um, it's brutal, isn't it? This life you, may be rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Happy New Year. We love you. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.